no. Oh, no. We've all seen the images, refugees pouring out of Ukraine, carrying their most precious possessions. In many cases, that's man's best friend. My friend's home has been destroyed by aviation bombs and little barrack rockets. Oh, oh no. Okay? That powerful bond on display as millions of Ukrainians flee with what they value most, man's best friend. There hasn't been a single day without Russian airstrikes since the war started. Global rescue efforts in Ukraine to save abandoned pets. We're driving a thousand miles a day from base to go and get these arms. Oh, oh my God. I don't know what to do. We're reuniting people with animals that have lost their husbands, lost their children, lost their house. They've got nothing left apart from the hope of this dog that they love. All right, good morning, guys. I have a layover in Copenhagen and Stockholm, and then I'll be arriving in Poland. In March, I flew over to Poland at the beginning of the Ukrainian war to volunteer at the border. Yeah, keep up the good work, and uh, I'll keep you posted. The focus was helping the people escaping, but what I quickly realized, many refugees brought their pets with them. Currently driving in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty crazy. On one of the nights near the Ukrainian border, I was driving home a group of Ukrainian people, and that's where I ran into this fox. Oh god, you're still alive. I took him in, and social media was... You might have seen me go viral all over social media because of a fox. And the biggest question I get is, what happened to the fox? This is a fox that I rescued near the Ukrainian-Polish border. He was beat up with a massive gash on his head in the freezing snow. I documented the series of rescuing him and ended up hitting 80 million views on TikTok. Tons of accounts have reposted my videos, sometimes lying about what really happened to the fox. And because of that, I've been bombarded by messages. So in this video, I'm going to take you back through my history of foxes, the domestication of foxes. By the way, did you guys know that anyone can get a pet fox, basically? And I'll also recount the story of how I found and rescued Rice Bowl. I honestly don't think you'd believe it if I didn't have video proof. I've been obsessed with foxes since I was a kid. These have been these mysterious creatures that I see as an embodiment of myself. I was the type of kid that would be on one side of the supermarket aisle throwing things over to the other side. I was mischievous, but really misunderstood. And in a lot of common fox mythology, foxes are clever spirits that just try to help out people in need. And that's been my biggest goal with this entire social media thing, trying to help out people that need it the most. That's why I went to Ukraine. I never really had a pet growing up, but if I did have one, I would want a fox. So I went down this Google search rabbit hole of how do I get Get a pet fox. And a crazy thing is that anyone can get one. But this research took me further into the realization of how important foxes are in understanding domesticating animals. I really think that the Bolyayev experiments was one of the most significant experiments in evolution that took place. It affected my life and my thinking in so many ways. In 1959, Dmitry Belyev started the Russian fox experiment. Fox number one. After starting at one month of age and continuing every month throughout infancy, the foxes were tested for their reactions to an experimenter. The experimenter would attempt to pet and handle the fox while offering it food. These foxes were bred solely because of their tameness towards working with other people. It turns out these new foxes displayed behavioral, physiological, and anatomical characteristics that were not found in the wild population. So more than 50 years have passed since Belyev's research, and his foxes continue to uncover the truth about genetics. And his research is still growing. And that's actually how you can get your own pet fox. These foxes are for sale to fund this program. They're about 9,000 US dollars from Siberia, which I know is super expensive, but people already spend thousands of dollars for a dog. Getting a fox to help out science, I don't know that. I'd do that. These animals have no fear of humans and they actively seek out human companionship. Most friendly foxes are known as elite foxes. From this experiment, they find that 70% of these foxes are friendly and domesticated. Do you know the fox you rescued? <laughs> yeah. I need some contact. It's a snowy day. I'm at the Ukrainian border volunteering and I'm tasked with getting this refugee family to their next shelter. The situation is super high tension. This family had just escaped from Ukraine by foot and their original driver never showed up. They were nervous about me because there are so many stories of people kidnapping and trafficking refugees. I can't speak to any of them because I can't speak Ukrainian. 
During the drive, I see this animal on the ground. I want to stop, but because of the high stress environment of this family, I wanted to get them to the next shelter as soon as possible. It takes me another hour to get them to their shelter, and I can't get this animal out of my mind. So I drive an hour all the way back to it, and I'm freaking stunned that it's a fox. So I did what anyone would do, and I picked him up and put him in my car. Didn't feel apprehensive whatsoever. You didn't feel like rabies was a yeah. potential issue. I just started driving back from the Ukrainian border and I f this fox was literally in the snow and freezing to death and he's breathing but he has this massive wound and I don't even know because I don't even have my own place here. I'm staying with these random people I met that are just letting me crash. I, I just have no idea what to do and it's like, it's gonna be 2 a.m. when I get back. So I'm just fucking stressed, you know, and I'm just been, are you still breathing, buddy? He's so cold. He's so freaking cold right now. I'm gonna turn the seat heat on max. The fox is freezing cold when I pick him up. It felt like I was holding something that had just come out of the freezer. Literally never felt anything colder. Oh God. God, I'm so one of the biggest problems is when I put the fox in the front seat, I put him next to the gear shifter and when he freaked out, I was too afraid of getting bit and so I struggled to put the car in park. Oh my god! But um, yeah, he's filming at the mouth. This is not a bad sign. Why are you so committed to Why? the fox? Yeah. I came to Ukraine to save things. Mm -hmm. so I was like, Fox on the ground. I mean, would you have left it on the ground? If it had rabies, I probably yeah, would have had it in my car. Would, would I, I didn't know it had rabies until yeah. I grabbed it and put it in my would car. Would I? Damn, this is a moral dilemma. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm driving in a war zone. Yeah. The fox is there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably leave, I can't lie. Let's, let's be real here. I think I'd drive past. Would you leave the fox to die? <laughs> I mean, I probably would. We're terrible people. But I'm vegetarian. <laughs> 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 So like the fox is breathing and uh, he's stable now, but I'm just worried because oh, wow. he's got oh, this that is hit on his head, so I hope everything's gonna be okay. Is he awake? But after a while, he ended up going back to bed, so I ended up taking him to the Ning guy's house since the landlord didn't allow foxes. Yeah, of course you can bring the fox, but uh, there's a little problem with the landlord, that's it. Otherwise we can fix it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We ended up taking him to a vet. And somehow, miraculously, they opened Hi. the door. Do you speak English? Uh, yes. Uh, we found this fox on the street. It's fox, yes, but uh, you know, it's white animal. It can have many diseases, yes. For example, rabies. Yes. It's can very... you tell if he has rabies? Uh, please uh, come in and wait a second, okay? okay? Yeah. Had you named the fox? Yeah, rice bowl. Rice bowl? Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, that's, that's really random, why? Well, to be honest, I thought I was gonna keep the fox. I think maybe I've been watching too many TikTok videos of freaking like people rescuing injured animals and then them being friends for the rest of their lives. And I was like, this is, this is my moment. I rescued this fox, we're gonna be best friends. So it turns out foxes in Poland might have rabies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 have you ever pet a fox before? No. Same! Yeah. <laughs> I will take a photo because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, like a, it's, it's my first time. And I feel like everyone just left him for dead. Was he moving or just laying on the street Completely somewhere? like laying on okay. the street. Like, I, I will check her if you see. There is no animal in Poland with a higher chance of having rabies than the fox. You have to call 986 number. You have to tell them where did you find him. He, he asked me how did you translate the fox? And I like normally they just grab him and put on a lap and came, oh my god, he can give you rabies and I know, like I never yeah. drink <laughs> like we are waiting for uh, doctors who take care of wild animals. They will come here and take care of him. Probably uh, unfortunately in Poland like in most of the cases they will um put it down. Yeah. Unfortunately. Because in, in mm. Lublin we don't have like special like shelter for such animals. In cases like this that what they gonna do I will ask them okay and I can drive them to like Krakow or something. <laughs> yeah. Because they will. Well, but like I can make. Yeah. I got a head. Yeah. Good. 
I think the biggest thing is that I've never really had a pet before, and so I kind of got emotionally latched to this fox that I rescued so quickly. But I think that's what I really pride myself on, is a world where we kind of just feel like we're almost emotionless. I try to pride myself on being able to be emotional and letting my guard down. So basically, we waited, and I think around like 4 a.m., the doctor finally got a hold of animal control there, and they were able to get the fox out. And after that, they were testing the fox for rabies, and if the fox didn't have rabies, then he was good to go. We're gonna take him to the vet clinic. Oh, there. that's good. We have a law. He needs to stay for like two weeks there if he's gonna make. He can. He can live. Maybe because they have to take him for like observation yeah. for a rabies. Oh. Thing. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's more for us. It's for yeah. Oh. <laughs> Probably they will release him back take, yeah, release him somewhere. Okay. Uh, he will give him some painkillers for now. Probably make some x-rays. I asked for that. I told him that somewhere in the area of the stomach, it's really painful. So yeah. probably he will make some x-rays to, to check it out. They have to take some tests and send it to the city next to, to Lublin and they will check it out for a rabies, okay? Right. Because if they will find a, a virus, they will put him down. Yeah. Immediately. Well, I mean, they didn't put him down yet. That's like way better than we thought. Probably if you wouldn't touch him, uh, yeah. probably they will just put him down immediately. But oh. So we saved the, his life! In the case that you <laughs> oh, okay. touch him. Okay, wait, wait. So what's the, what's the timeline between like you being at the vets and then, you know... We found out two weeks later. Were you in contact with the fox over that time? The veterinarian, she, she didn't call back mm -hmm. and the fox is fine. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that we wouldn't be able to keep him because he's a wild animal. Yeah. I didn't hear back for two weeks and the Indian guys messaged me and they're like, hey, we didn't hear back for two weeks. That means I think the fox is clear because that means they t finished the rabies testing. Phil, what the fuck? You've picked up a fox? Dude, I've seen you do crazy shit, but I can't believe you literally picked up a fox. Like, where the f did you even find it? That is insane. So yeah, unfortunately, two weeks later, I reached out to the veterinarian and we found out that didn't make it. It's been a few months since I told the story. So then I messaged her. I was like, hey, do you want to get dinner sometime? Like talk about the fox. I was going to keep the fox. Did you keep yeah. the fox? Yeah. The fox died. <laughs> well, no, because no, I didn't see that coming. Oh, wow. No, I'm not laughing at the fox. No, but like, okay. It's the... You saved a dying fox and then you let it die. No, 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 no. You... Like, it's sad, it's sad. If I'd known what was coming, I would have been more stoic. This just feels so wrong. Yeah. And at first I was really sad, but I realized that at the end of the day, all I could do was, you know, give it a better place and a warmer environment to pass away. 